Father. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, God, because you're worthy, God. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, God. You're worthy, Lord God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. You're so worthy, Lord God. You're so awesome, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your presence in this place. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, God, for this morning worship, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to experience you this morning, Father God. And we thank you for your glory and your honor, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to take part in your experience, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to take part in your worship, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to take part in your day, Lord God. And we thank you because this Sunday isn't about us, Lord God. It's about you. So we thank you, Lord God, for giving us the honor to be in your presence, Lord God. So we say this morning, Lord God, as have your way in this service, Lord God. Have your way as you want, Lord God, in this presence, Lord God. Thank you, God. Have your way, Lord God, in this place, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. We pray for our pastor, Lord God, as she brings the word, Lord God. Pray it make her way easy, Lord God. Let the word be fertile, Lord God. Let the word fall on fertile ground, Lord God, and not on ears that won't hear it, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, for that, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Kingdom Grace. I'll be reading from the sixth chapter of Ephesians, starting at the 13th verse. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. The word of the Lord is already blessed. So as we gather together in worship, Psalms 95 gives us a direct command and, and some backbone or some context to what we're here for. It says, come, shout praises to God, raise the roof for the rock who saved us. Let's march in his presence, singing praises, lifting the rafters with our hymns. And why? Because our God is the best. He is a high king over all gods. In one hand, he holds deep caves and caverns. In the other hand, he grasps the high mountains. He owns the ocean. He sculpted the earth. So come, let us worship. Let us bow down before him on our knees before God who's made us. Oh, yes, he is our God. Let us worship him. This is your call to work. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, I know we few in number today, but how many of y'all know that God is still good and he's still worthy of our praise? Anybody know he's worthy?
me. He has done great things for me. He has done great things for me. Yeah. testimony with okay. you real quick. It's the goodness of the Lord. God, he is so good. And so when I say he has done great things for me, you have no idea. Here's the thing. In 2007, when I went to prison, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. So from 2007 until now, I've been taking high blood pressure medication now the thing is that because my mother had high blood pressure and my father had high blood pressure you was supposed to think that it's just kind of normal to have high blood pressure but how many know that's not God's way because two weeks ago when I went to the doctor the doctor said you know your your blood pressure is, is doing pretty good have you considered coming off of blood pressure medication have I considered <laughs> have I considered he said well here's what I want you to do I want you to take your blood pressure medication every other day for two weeks and then just stop oh, oh, oh that's that is that all it is just just yeah he said yeah just take so I just want you I just want to share with you that this is that week where I've taken no blood pressure medication. And boy, do I feel real good. <laughs> Here's the thing. Now, so so there, there's a catch, though, saints. I, I work out four times a week. I go to the Y and I run and I'm eating better. So there's a part that I had to play in this. So I just want to encourage you. Because, see, there's a, part, there's a part that we've always got to play. Yeah. And what God wants us to do, we got to come away from the pork, come away from the salt, come away from those things, and just do a little bit of exercise, and you can be delivered from those very things. I thank God for his delivering power that I'm no longer on blood pressure medication. Hallelujah. God is good. And he's not a respecter of person because if he did it for me, hallelujah, he can do the very same thing for you. So, yeah, I will bless the Lord. He has done great things for me, so I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, because I want to see you. I want to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy.
glory. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. Pour out your power in love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Come on, praise Let's sing. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Because I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. Come on, open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 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 To see you high and lifted up. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy. I want to see you. 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 Oh God, I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, right to the top. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 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 Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Come on, just see you high and lift it up. See you high and lift it up. Shining in the light. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. Pour out your power and love. As we sing. As we sing holy, holy, Come on, just holy. see you high. See you high and lift it up. Shining in the light. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. Pour out and your, your power love. and love. As we sing. As we sing.
Jesus. Just like Jesus. I want my walk. I want to be just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. I want to be just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. I want to be just like Jesus. 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 I want to walk like Jesus. Talk like Jesus. Live like Jesus. I want to give like Jesus. I want to be just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. Uh, if that's your cry, I want to be just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. I want to be just like Jesus. 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 I want to look like Jesus. Just like Jesus. I want to live like Jesus. I want to walk like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to give like Jesus. I want to live like Jesus. I want to live like Jesus. I want to give like Jesus. I want to be just like Jesus. Just like Jesus. To see you high.
Part of our congregation lives in Akron. And we were in Akron on yesterday. And I don't know how many of you all follow the news or whatever, but Akron has just really been under siege. Not just, not just in violence, but the city itself. I came home from Akron yesterday and I just began to pray and say, God, what in the world? And, 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 he, and he helped me to understand that the city is under siege. The mayor of Akron suddenly resigned. We're waiting on that story because you know there's a story. Because don't nobody just up and resign. For no, as long as he's been mayor, you don't just get up and quit. So, so, so there's there's a story that's yet to be told. Some of you know. Some of you have family members, relatives. Sister Betty, even on yes, on last Sunday gave her testimony about the layoffs at the University of Akron. Thank God she was not touched, but how many of y'all know a whole lot of people lost their jobs? A whole lot of people in Akron are right now, and I know we in Mansfield, but, but, but and, and, and so it would be real easy for us to say, well, that's Akron, and I hope they get it together, but I, I, I believe God wants us to intercede for the city of Akron today. Even on yesterday, there, you know, of course, gun violence has just been incredible in Akron over the last whole five years. It didn't just start. Amen. Even back when I was pastoring in Akron, one of our members' son was shot and killed. And it's just, it's just, it's just been horrific. In a matter of fact, our own sister Nadine's nephew was shot and killed in Akron. And even on yesterday, they were burying a young man who had been shot and killed. Watch this. And at the repast, they had had the funeral, and they were at the, the, the after the funeral dinner, and gunshots rang out. At the repast. I don't know if y'all are catching this. Normally, when you're around things of God, that's normally a safe place. But at the repast, while the family was still in mourning, Gunshots rang out yesterday, and it's my understanding that at least one, four people were shot, at least one of them killed. Now, it'd be real easy for us to sit here today and say, boy, that's a shame about what's going on in Akron. But because we have Akron members, and because we have folk that we're connected to, if we don't intercede, shame on us. So I want every person to come to the altar this morning, every person that can, every person that, 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 that is touched, by the things that are going on in Akron, and I especially want our members that live in Akron to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want the folk that actually live in Akron, I want you all closest to the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those of you that have family in Akron, come on, Brandy, come on up here, because you have family in Akron. Anybody else? that has family in Akron. Because if we don't know nothing else, Kingdom Grace, we know that God hears and answers our prayers. And I'm not suggesting that he don't hear and answer prayers that are prayed in other places, but we know what go on here. Amen. And so we just want to intercede this morning. We want to pray over the city of Akron. I have good friends, dear friends in Akron, people that I love family, folk that, they're not family by blood. Dr. Sprinkle has blood family in Akron. I have people in Akron they're not family by blood, but they're close to me. Amen? And it's Akron now, but if we don't begin to pray and intercede, how many of y'all know it'll soon be Mansfield? Right. Come on, somebody. Akron wasn't always like this. Right. Right. And so if we don't begin to pray and intercede now, not only for them, but for the safety of our own city. 
came in a few weeks ago, They uh, about a month ago now, they had a citywide altar call in Akron. 43 people baptized, gave their lives to the Lord in downtown Akron on the grounds where normally concerts and that sort of thing is going on. So I understand that the enemy is angry, but I, we need to serve him notice today that our God is greater. Come on, I can't get nobody to go with me on that one. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is bigger, and he's greater. We have family members that have sons in Akron. We have, we have family members that have grandchildren in Akron. And this violence has got to stop. Now, I'm going to talk about it from the word perspective in a few minutes from a very familiar passage of scripture, but I just want to pray first. Father, we thank you that you have already told us that we could come before your throne and find help in the time of need. And so we declare by standing at this altar today, God, we need you. We lift up the city of Akron before you right now, God. And we ask you, Father, to take over that city. We ask that your spirit be released in the city of Akron. So much so, Father, that the drug dealers will put their guns down. Father, we come against the drug activity. Come on, I need y'all to go with me. We come against the drug activity that is trying to overtake that city. And we don't act, Father, in ignorance, but we understand what's going on. We understand that it is the love of money that is driving some of the violence that is taking place in Accra. But God, I pray that you show them another way. You foul spirit of murder, we come against you today in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over the city of Accra. Not only do we plead the blood over the city of Akron, but we plead it over the city of Mansfield. Father, we ask, oh God, that it doesn't even that, that spirit of murder doesn't even come near this city. That this spirit of murder don't even be allowed in this city. We place a hedge of protection around this city, oh God. Father, we pray for those families. All of the many, 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 many families that have been impacted by the killings that's taken place in Akron. We pray for every mother that's had to bury her son. We pray for every child that has lost their father, lost their mother, lost their auntie, lost their uncle. Father, we come against the spirit of anger. Father, every one of those who lost someone, comfort their hearts now. Cause them to love you and see you and seek you even the more. Father, and for our family that lives in Akron, we pray protection over them. That as they go in and go out, oh God, because we understand that bullets can't see. So we thank you for protecting them, oh God. And we decree your word over them that no danger will come nigh their dwelling, oh God. But that you will post guardian and warring angels even around their households. Father, we pray over the finances of the city of Akron. Whatever is going on in the, in the financial realm, God, we ask that you make it right, oh God. We lift up those that are impacted by the job losses at the University of Akron. It doesn't make sense to us that millions were spent remodeling the president's home and now folk have to lose their job. But Father, you know all things. And so we lift that situation up before you now. Father, we intercede. We stand in the gap. We make up the hedge. And we intercede today for that city. That you will restore Akron to a God-fearing city. That you will restore Akron to a God-respecting city. That you will restore grandmothers to be the kind of grandmothers that teach their grandchildren about the love of God. Father, and as I said, even for this city, I pray, oh God, a hedge of protection over Mansfield, that you will drive out those that seek to bring harm, oh God, that you will drive out those that don't know the, your way, oh God, 
and that you will cause, oh God, a peace. We speak peace over the city of Akron. Father, even on yesterday, let the events of yesterday prick even the hardest of hearts and cause them to know that there has to be a better way. And you, Father, are that better way. So I pray for an outpouring of your spirit in the city of Akron. I lift up every pastor in Akron today that will be standing behind this sacred desk that they will not just spew rhetoric from the pulpit, but that they will be touched by the things that are going on in their city and that they will continue to unite. We understand that the enemy would like to cause many to think that even the altar call was for naught. It was not for naught. And so I pray that you continue to bind those pastors together and cause them to work in unity so that Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit can come again to the city of Akron. Father, thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you that we shall see change and turn around. And we're not going to be crazy. We're going to give you the praise for it, God. We're going to tell everybody that will listen that you did it. And we will thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Just take a moment and hug somebody. Tell them you love them. Come on. Especially those from Akron. Love on our Akron family. Amen. Let them know that we got their back. Amen. We are praying for them. Amen. Praying over that city. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. I want I want to <laughs> I want to do the offering real quick because I just heard not that I'm in a hurry, but I just heard the Lord say something Q. Every Sunday I put your ties in for you, but the Lord wants you today to bring your tithes yourself. So here. <laughs> he, th This young man tithes off of what the church gives him. Okay. Some of y'all will catch up to that later in the week. <laughs> All right, so I want to do this so that he can bring his own time. Amen. Now, we have a lot of members that are on vacation my phone was ringing so much with folk telling me they wasn't going to be here today. I thought, wow, we. <laughs> I'll be glad when Labor Day weekend get here and everybody could be back home. Amen. Amen. But I'm thankful for all of you that are here. Amen. Um, there's some things I'm going to talk about a little later in the service. I'm so thankful that with they, the, the Sister Benita, I tell you what, that's one of the hardest working young women I know. And... Um, she coordinated that yard sale on yesterday, and let me tell you, they did a wonderful job. It was very, very successful, so much so that they're going to continue it on the 29th of this month. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. All right, come on, everybody that's, that's giving in the offering today, let me just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have some faithful members that even though they're not here, they mail their tithes and their offerings in. And we appreciate that because the bills don't stop just because it's summer. Amen. <laughs> Matter of fact, y'all like to sit in this air conditioning. Well, it ain't free. A to the man. A, and in order for it to be nice and cool when we get here on Sunday, that means it got to go on on Saturday. Amen. Because that one, y'all saw what happened that one Sunday. We forgot to turn it on on Saturday. And y'all was all in here like, oh, Jesus, I ain't going to hell if it's like this. <laughs> Um, so, again, let me just thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks to all of you that worked in the yard sale. I'm going to come back to that a little later, so don't think I forgot about y'all. I'm going to say more about that a little later. But thank you for being faithful in your giving and for understanding that um, this is still a part of our worship. Amen? Because we understand our biblical responsibility as worshipers, we bring our hearts to God, recognizing that we... 
Return to him in our tithes and offerings. Where our money is, is where our heart is. We pay the tithe because we owe God our vow. We give our offerings, sowing seeds to reap fruit. We sow into our pastor to reap a prophet's reward. We sow into the church to reap kingdom benefits. As we cheerfully, as we cheerfully, as we cheerfully participate in giving and receiving, we have from the Lord jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, benefits, sales, and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, and bills reduced, blessings and increase. Say this with me real loud. I am out of debt. My needs are met. I've got plenty more to put in store. Thank you, Lord, for teaching me how to be a godly giver and receiver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to talk to you all, <coughs> excuse me, for a few minutes this morning from a very familiar passage of scripture. Praise team, you can be seated. I done sung all I'm going to today. Hallelujah. Come on, can we thank God for Brother Mike and Brother Q? Amen. For their faithfulness. I'm so thankful for those awesome young men. Amen and their faithfulness. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning from a real familiar passage of scripture. As a matter of fact, some of y'all, most of y'all will be able to quote it without even turning to it, but turn to it just to make sure I don't miss any words. Um, some of you have learned this even from a child. Um, I want to talk to you from Psalms chapter one. Shouldn't be hard to find. Shouldn't take long to find. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter 1, if you got it, say amen. amen. If you still look and say, hold up. All right. Amen. And I'm only going to read the first three verses, I think. No, actually, we'll just read all three because I don't think I'm going to read it. All right, y'all got it? How about we read it out loud together? Psalms 1, ready, read. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, 
The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. I just want to talk to you for a few for a few moments from this thought, living the blessed life. Look at somebody and say, living the blessed life. Look at somebody else and say, I'm going to live the blessed life. Now point to our live stream audience and say, you ought to be living the blessed life. Now, I, um, I'm not going to go all through what I normally go through <coughs> in the way of introduction because I really just preach from Psalms. Um, uh, if it wasn't last week, it was the week before. And so I've already taught you that Psalms is the 19th book of the Bible. I've already said that it contains 150 chapters, 2,461 verses, and 53,743 words. I already taught you that. Psalms 118 is, is, is said to be at the, at, at the middle, the exact middle of the Bible. Thank you. You will find Psalms 118. And the verse that's key to us is this verse that says it is better to trust in God than to put confidence in man. This particular psalm, Psalms 1, somebody say Psalms 1. Psalms 1 is very familiar to those of us. If you've been in church any length of time, you already know Psalms 1. We already understand that the word says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, the other night, I told you yesterday, as we came home from Akron, I was just grieved at, at, what, I, at what had happened at this repast. I think it just really messed with my mind that somebody opened fire at the repast. You know, there's some things, watch this, y'all. There are some things that you expect to happen in certain places. If, if, if Roosevelt, if it had happened in the club, it would have bothered me, but not maybe to the same extent that it bothered me on yesterday. Because what yesterday said to me was that Satan is getting bolder in what he does. For, for somebody to already, are y'all picturing this? They're all The family is already in grief because their son has been killed and they can't even deal with their own grief without another incident taking place. Somebody say, at the repast. Y'all got to catch this. In other words, I don't know who preached the funeral and it doesn't really matter, but somebody had just preached the word of God. Now, I don't know if the person that was responsible for the shooting was at the funeral or not. Maybe that person didn't hear the word of God. But the fact is, the word of God had just gone forth, and not an hour later, shots ring out. That says to me, my brother and my sister, that we are living surely in end times. Now, I know Big Mama and them said it back, back in the day. They've been, we've been talking about how the, we, these are the last and evil days. But we are now li seeing proof. Somebody say seeing proof that these are the last and evil days. We live in a society where people don't value life. And, and although we don't have it to the extent that Akron has, Mansfield has not been exempt. We've had our own cases of shootings in this city. And so the thing that the Lord began to deal with me on and the thing that he wanted me to share, because I had a different message prior to that. The thing that he wanted me to share, though, is just like the enemy is increasing in his attacks, it's also time for the body of Christ to increase in the offensive. Woo, God, have mercy. Please understand what I'm saying. It's not time for us to increase on the defense. It's time for us to increase on the offense. Okay, watch this. Okay, okay. Because some of y'all, maybe, maybe some of y'all not like me. I had to learn football. I didn't always like football. Matter of fact, here's how novice I was, Craig. Here's how novice I was to all the men in the house. Y'all will appreciate this. Originally, I didn't even realize that football had plays. I thought the quarterback just looked up, saw somebody that was open, and threw the ball. 
and that person caught it and ran. It wasn't until our sons were playing football and came home with these grand big old books called playbooks that I began to understand that football was strategic. Okay, y'all, y'all gonna miss your shout. Sue, so I just thought the man just looked up and said, oh, there's Quinn. I'm going to throw him the ball. And Quinn, I didn't realize that they had running backs and tight ends and tail ends. I didn't realize that there was a strategy. I didn't realize that when they got in the huddle and somebody said Georgia 49, that that was actually code for telling the players what to do. I know y'all think I'm lost. I promise you I'm not lost. And so on, on, in football, there is the defensive team and there is the offensive team. The job of the defensive team is to keep the other team from scoring. They are defending. I know Brandy is, see, you learned something, ain't you? They are defending. Are y'all listening? But when the offensive team get on the, on the field, the job of the offensive team is to score. So, my son, I wish he was here today, but y'all seen him. He, you know, he a big dude. And he played on the offensive line. His job was to protect whoever had the ball. So in order, watch this, in order for, 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 for the guy to, to score, the, the opposing team had to get through my son. Oh, God, I wish I had some folks that could grab this. It's time for the body of Christ to say, I'm on the offensive team and put me on the line. In order for the enemy to get to you, he going to have to go through me. And because I'm big and swole in the word of God, he can't penetrate. And a lot of it, a lot of it, Watch this. A lot of it on the football field is mental. My boys taught me that there's a whole lot of trash talking. My grandson's sitting here. He played football. There's a whole lot of, there's some stuff go on on the field that we don't know nothing about. We don't hear the trash talking. We don't hear them, be, the, them being called out their name. There's one particular team, I ain't going to say no name, but there's one particular team here in Mansfield that the Tigers play. It's always the last game of the year. <laughs> and, and always at that game, the guys, the Tigers, have to go in, not only in brawn, but they got to go in in mentality. Because that particular team is notorious for calling you out your name. They're notorious for talking about your mama. They're notorious for trying to tell you how dumb you are. But watch this. The purpose, the reason that they do that is to try to take you off your square. Y'all are missing this. And the enemy does us the same way. So he start telling us, you ain't going to never be nothing. You ain't going to never amount to nothing. Ain't things are never going to get better for you. Your husband going to always be drunk. Your kids going to always be on drugs. He starts talking to you in an attempt to mess up your mind. Oh, but if you get over here in Psalms 1, when that old devil starts trying to play mind games, when that old devil starts trying to tell you that it ain't going to never get better for you, when that old devil tries to tell you you're going to have to stay in that sickness, when that old devil tries to tell you that your finances ain't going to never get better, if you can run to the word of God, why should I run to the word of God? Because the word of God says in Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
Now I want to slow down. I want to slow down because I want y'all to get this. Watch this. That word bless, those of you that have an amplified Bible, that word bless says happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable. Y'all. Okay, say it with me. Say, I'm blessed, which means I'm happy, I'm fortunate, I'm prosperous, and I'm enviable. Y'all got it? That word blessed means I'm supposed to be happy. Look at your neighbor and say, you're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to live a blessed life. People are supposed to be envious of you. Look at your neighbor and tell them you're supposed to be prosperous. See, the problem with them drug boys and the reason all this shooting is going on is because they're trying to get to prosperity quickly. But we understand that the true blessing and the true opportunity for prosperity comes from walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. He said, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, enviable is the man, watch this, who walks, watch this, and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly. Can I just put, can I just park here for a minute? Because when he says not in the counsel of the ungodly, can I help you? Not all ungodly advice comes from ungodly people. God-fearing people are able to give ungodly advice. That's why you have to know the word of God for yourself. So that when people start telling you, because how many of y'all know, folk are quick to tell you what you should do. Lean in, let me help y'all. Them folk that's telling y'all what they wouldn't put up with, run. Because the very ones that's telling you what they wouldn't put up with is putting up with something worse than what you're dealing with. Watch this. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not. Somebody say, walketh not. Somebody say it loud, walketh not. See, in this season, if we're going to be on the offenses, offensive team, we got to make up in our mind that I'm not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Can I go back to my football analogy? See, when you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, no matter what they say about your mama in the huddle, you know who you are. Okay, yeah. When you, when you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, it really don't matter what they say about you. All that matters to you is what he says about you. And he says, I'm blessed. I'm above. I'm not beneath. I'm the, I'm the lender. I'm not the borrower. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed coming out. That's what he says. Look at somebody say, I'm going with what he says. Blessed is a man that standeth not, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Watch this. Nor standeth in the way of the sinners. In other words, watch this. In other words, the body of Christ cannot submit to the things of the world. Y'all got it? Look at somebody say, you can't submit to the things of the world. You got to submit to the things of God. In other words, you can't be, in, oh, okay, okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. Back to my football analogy. This is working out well. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Back to my football analogy. There are some guys on the, on the team, they got the jersey, they got the helmet, they got the pads, and they never see any action on the field. If you read the roster, they name it on the roster, but watch this, they are inactive. God said he don't want his people to be inactive members of the team. He want everybody on his team to be an active participant in this war against the devil. Somebody jump up and say, I'm in this war. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth. Somebody say, don't stand. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got to watch where you stand. Every 
everything that look good ain't good. You got to watch where you stand. Look at them and tell them you got to watch. I think, I, I think it was Bishop Jakes I heard say this, and I think it's so true. He said, show me your crowd, and I'll show you your future. <laughs> if you hanging out with liars and cheaters and fornicators and adulterers, and whoremongers, if that's your crowd, guess what your future is? That. Somebody say that. But if you hanging out with the righteousness of God, if you hanging out in his word, if you hanging out with people that love God, if you hanging out with people who are full of the Holy Ghost and full of his power, guess what your future is? Somebody say that. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Watch this. Nor sitteth, somebody say, nor sits down. See, 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 watch this. Some of the stuff that's going on in the land today, it really is not meant to cause you to have a nervous breakdown. It's, it's meant to cause you to take a stand. Uh, president Obama, love him dearly, think it's cool that he was the first black president, think it's cool that he made it for two terms, love all of that. But but I don't agree with everything President Obama did. Right. And just the fact that he assigned, that he approved the same-sex marriage don't mean that I have to agree with it. Y'all, see, see, watch this. Whenever somebody makes a decision, I don't care if it is the commander-in-chief, as the body of Christ, you have a decision to make. That's right. You can either sit down in what they allow, or you can stand up for the righteousness of God. I believe at Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church, I've got some folk that have made up their mind. I'm going to stand up for the righteousness of God. Do I have anybody that's willing to stand for the righteousness? <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, you can't just sit anywhere. You can't just get comfortable anywhere. You can't just get comfortable in anything. You can't just relax in anything. You can't just rest in any place. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all go with me. Y'all remember Samson? Y'all remember how he hooked up with Delilah? Y'all remember that she, she was not of the right race, so he really had no business with her. But he let his flesh get all in the decision. Are y'all listening? And because his flesh got into the decision, he relaxed. He laid his head in the wrong lap. He relaxed in the, in, the, in the condition of sin. Messed around and told that girl his secret. She messed around while he was asleep. Oh, y'all don't miss that. Please don't miss that. The enemy don't get you while you're wide awake. He gets you when you sleep. I need some folk that'll say, I know that's right. I need some folks that'll say he ain't going to keep getting me in my sleep because I'm going to be girded up even in my sleep. Because Samson got weak, strongest man in the world. But he couldn't get his flesh under control. Laid his head down in her lap. She cut off all of his hair and then went to screaming, the Philistines is upon you. He got up thinking he could do what he would normally do and found out he didn't have no strength. Can I just tell 10 people, this is the reason you can't fool around with sin, because fooling around with sin will cause you to lose your strength. How many of y'all familiar with Superman? I'm going to be done in a minute. How many of y'all familiar with Superman? Y'all remember Superman? Used to go into them phone booths and come out. He'd go in as Clark Kent and come out as Superman. He done rescue people. He done save people. He done healed the whole planet. But guess what? All you had to do was put some kryptonite around Superman and all of his powers were gone. Can I ask you today, what is your kryptonite? What is the thing that you can't shake away from? What is the thing that even when you say you're not going back to it, when the crowd is gone, you find yourself tipping back? That's why he says, don't relax, don't rest. Where the scornful, don't hang out. Stop hanging out with folk that's always negative. Stop hanging out with folk that always got something negative to say. Well, church was all right, but if only the praise team had a song this song instead of 
It was all right. But look at somebody and say, don't sit down, don't sit down. Don't sit down in the score for don't 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 hang out with folk that ain't got nothing nice to say. Don't don't hang out with folk that make a mockery of what you're doing. Don't don't hang out with people that make a mockery of who God is and who Jesus Christ was. Amen. He says, okay, I'm almost done. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Watch this verse two. But his delight. Whew. Somebody say, my delight is in the law of the Lord. Now watch this, because some of y'all said it because I asked you to. But to, for the folk that, that that's really your delight, you already doing what verse 2 says. You are already meditating in his word day and night. I want to challenge Kingdom Grace Fellowship for the rest of August. Somebody say for the rest of August. Today is the 9th, I do believe. Okay, so, so for the rest of August, here's my challenge to you. For every morning, I want you to read a psalm that corresponds with the day. And every night, I want you to read the corresponding Proverbs. So today, I want you to read Psalms 9. And tonight, I want you to read Proverbs 9. And I want you to finish that out for the rest of August. And watch God speak to the hearts of his people. Because the Bible says, watch this, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, does he meditate day and night? How many of y'all are ready for the promise? If you, if you do these things, if you walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, if you don't stand in the way of sinners, and if you don't see, see, sit in the seat of the scornful, and if your delight is in the law of the Lord, and if you meditate in it day and night, watch the promise. It says you will be like a tree planted. Look at somebody and say, I want to be planted. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, see, the reason, okay, watch this. The reason palm trees don't grow in Ohio is because they cannot handle Ohio's climate. Palm trees don't have deep roots. Their roots, watch this, are superficial. <laughs> so the reason palm trees can't grow in Ohio is right around December when that temperature start dropping and that wind start howling. Palm trees don't have what it takes to stand in the cold. They don't have what it takes to stand in the wind. If a strong wind, y'all know how sometimes we get those howling winds that rattle all the windows in the house? One of those winds would take a palm tree out. So that's why they don't grow in Ohio. But an oak tree, somebody say an oak tree. A uh, oak tree's roots run deep into the ground. So no matter how bad the wind blow, the oak tree just keep on standing there. Can I tell somebody today that God wants you to be an oak tree in the spirit? He wants you to be able to stand against the wild of the enemy. He wants you to be able to stand when the winds blow and when stuff is going on. problem with some of us is we just like that palm tree. We look good, but we don't have no substance. God said, I'm more concerned about folk that's got substance and are able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Watch this. He says that he shall be like a tree planted. Somebody say planted. Please catch this and I can be almost done. He said, he shall be like a tree planted. Somebody say planted again. Planted, watch this, by the rivers of water. When you obey God, watch this, you become planted by the rivers of water. In other words, when you obey God, you become not only planted, but you become permanently nourished. He does. Not only will he plant you and strengthen you and make you strong, watch this, but now because you are in him and in his word, he gives you an endless supply of nourishment. Yes. Yes. And catch this, you don't have to come out of yourself to get it. You don't have to 
have to come out of who you are. You don't have to come out of where you are. You don't have to come out of where he planted you. You could just stand in the place that he planted you and understand that all of your needs and all of your nourishment are going to be provided. Do I have anybody in here that know he is the great provider? Here's the rest of the promise. You'll be planted by rivers of water. Watch this. And you will bring forth fruit in season. Somebody say in season. Look at somebody and say, it does not matter what people think or when people think you should have. The promise of the word is you'll come forth in season. Y'all are missing this. See, when you know that you'll come forth in season, you won't get caught up trying to compete with other other people. Because when my season comes, it's my season. Oh, I wish I had somebody that wanted this today. When my season comes, it's my season. Okay. When my, okay, I'll talk to you because you seem like you. When my season comes, it's my season. And when it's my season, even if you don't want me to have it, there is nothing you can do about it because God has decided it is my. I, can, can, I just, can, I just, can I just share this with about 10 of y'all? 10 of y'all will get this. There's 10 of y'all in this room right now that by August 31st, you're going to be in a different season of life. Okay, I got three people that got it. Maybe four. The rest of y'all are like, I ain't sure that's me. Can I say it again? By August 31st, there's about 10 of y'all that's going to be in a different season of life because God is getting ready to shift some stuff on your behalf. High five somebody and tell them, I'm going into my season. I ain't went through all this hell to miss my season. I ain't went through all this. To, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to. I ain't went through all this sickness and disease and poverty and lack to miss my season. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going into my season. He said he bringing forth his fruit in his season. Watch this. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. When you get into your season, watch what happens. Your leaf is not going to wither. Y'all are missing this. Okay. You're either missing it or you're eating it. I ain't sure which one it is. I'm hoping it's eating. Okay, good eating. All right. All right. Psalms. Uh, uh-huh. uh Psalms. We know this one, too. We know this one real well. Psalms 30 and 5. For his anger endureth for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure. How long? But joy cometh. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me get you out of the Amplify. For his anger is but for a moment. Watch this. But his favor is for a lifetime. Okay, run back to Psalms 1. Y'all, y'all, oh, God, help me in here. Watch this. He says he going to bring forth his fruit in his season. Watch this. His leaf also shall not wither. Why is the leaf not going to wither? Because what God is getting ready to do in your life ain't just for right now. It's for your lifetime. He's not going to bless you just for the last quarter of 2015. But this season of favor that you're about to go into, you will never come out of it. Somebody ought to jump up and say, thank you, Jesus. Because the truth of the matter is, some of y'all been waiting on a change. Some of y'all been waiting on a turnaround. Some of y'all been waiting on a breakthrough. Some of y'all in this audience need a miracle. Some of y'all in this sanctuary need God to do something that only God can do. So not only... Will he cause woo, your fruit to come forth? But once you get to that place, your leaf shall not wither. And what? 
Okay, this, I, I, I'm going to my seat on this one. And what soever you do shall Y'all ain't saying nothing. God's getting ready to bring you into a season where whatever you do is going to prosper. Benita, God is getting ready to bring us into a season. Watch this. Well, not even we can mess up what he getting ready to do. Now, this is all, that's only good news to the five people that have messed up some stuff before. <laughs> to the rest of y'all that's been perfect all your life, God bless you. We thank you. But for the ten of us that have messed up some stuff... For the ten of, okay, can I go there? For the ten of us that have jacked up some stuff. For the ten of us that was toe up from the flow up. For the ten of us that got caught in some stuff. I got good news for you today. God said he's calling you into a new season. And in this season, you're going to prosper. And not only are you going to prosper, but everything. Come on, just go touch. Come on, just go touch three. Come on, just go touch and say everything that I touch. Woo! Okay, I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be done. But I need everybody in the sanctuary to lift up both of your hands and repeat after me. These are blessed hands. These are blessed hands. These are anointed hands. And the Bible says that everything that I put my hands to is going to prosper. Go on and declare it. My health is getting ready to prosper. My finances are getting ready to prosper. My children are getting ready to prosper. My money is getting ready to prosper. My mind getting ready to prosper. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm on my way to my blessed place. I'm on my way to my blessed place. I'm on my way. Here it is though. Here it is though. See we want to we want to celebrate over verse 3. But you got to commit to verse 1 and 2. You can't get verse 3 without doing verse 1 and 2. You don't get to be prosperous in all your ways until you first make up in your mind. I'm not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm not going to stand in the way of the sinners. I'm not going to seat in the seat of the scornful. But my delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, I'm going to meditate. Anybody in here go meditate? The Bible says, if you delight in the Lord, you will meditate day and night, night and day. Good evening, y'all. May the Lord God bless you real good. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm getting ready to walk in my blessed place. Tell him, I'm leaving the past behind me and I'm pressing forward to the things ahead. I'm getting ready to walk in my blessed place. I'm getting ready to live a blessed life. Do I have anybody that's ready to live a blessed life? Stand up on your feet and wave bye-bye to your past. Wave bye-bye to the pain. Wave bye-bye to what used to be. Say, I'm walking in a blessed place. It's time for the body of Christ.
to walk in our offensive position. It's time for us to not always have to react after the devil does the thing. But it's time for us to be in position that we can see a thing before it happens and take authority over it. Look at somebody one more time and say, I'm living the blessed life. I'm going to walk out Psalms 1. Lift your hands where you are, all over the sanctuary. Whew. Father, I said what you gave me to say. I said it how you told me to say it. All of these people in this sanctuary have not received this word. I decree, Father, the Psalms 1 blessing over every one of their lives. I decree an awareness over each of your people. Huh. When we're about to walk in places that we're not supposed to walk, put a check in our spirit. When we're about to stand in places that we don't need to stand, put a check in our spirit. When we're about to relax and be comfortable in places we don't need to be comfortable in, put a check in our spirit. Help us to delight in your law day and night so that we can be trees planted by the river of water whose leaf shall not wither and whatsoever we do shall prosper thank you for your people today that made their way to church to hear this word and I'm believing you father for signs wonders and miracles in the lives of your people in Jesus name we pray amen Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. We have one young man visiting with us today. Amen. And we want to welcome you to Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church, where Jesus Christ is King. I pray that you were blessed. He can stand up so everybody can see you. He came with Minister Ernest today. Amen. Are we thankful that he's here today? Amen. We pray that the word blessed your life. As I look over the audience, it looks like everybody is already at home. Amen. And so I'll just thank you today for coming and for hearing the word of God. To our live stream audience, God bless you. Thank you for joining us each week. I pray that you were blessed by the word today. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, hmm. I guess whoever's doing the announcements, come on. Hallelujah. Somebody just, I just feel a worship. Can you just lift up your hands for a moment? I just feel a worship in the room. I just feel like this word was for somebody today. And you don't have to come up and say, Pastor, that word was for me. But I, I sense it. I sense that somebody was like, God, I need a word that's going to help me in my situation. 